Hi, I'm James from Siren, and today I'm going to be contradicting myself. Stay tuned. So in the previous a workshop tour video, I discussed using the duct tape trick for dust port adapters. And you wouldn't believe how many takes has taken me to say that correctly, so we're there finally. Uh, and what that was, was using the standard shop back, you just cover your dust port in duct tape and cut the hole in there and you can just slot it in and away you go. It's a nice, quick and easy solution. However, I'm going to contradict myself from that video because I've found that having done this for a few weeks now full time, I think that's just too time consuming. Um, I need to be able to change from tool to tool to tool fast. Um, so today we're going to be just making uh, a permanent adapter. I've had very little luck finding one off the shelf, a rubber adapter or anything like that. So we're going to make one out of the mountains of scrap wood that I've accumulated in here. So yeah, let's take a look. Now, I really don't know why I have even a fraction of this. I'm never going to use most of this, these pieces. So I must have a clear out of this. But I think we'll use a nice piece of glued up pallet wood because it looks so pretty. So if we take a look down here, we've got the dust extraction port for the table saw. I've just pulled the saw away just a bit so we can have a look. And it's a very oddball size. It's not full size for a proper dust extractor and it's not small enough for a shop bed. So what we'll do, what we need to do first is measure the inside diameter of this uh, tube there. I've selected a lovely piece of glued up pallet wood for the cutout. So we'll cut the circle and then make a smaller circle within that which will take the shop back connection. So using a pair of digital calipers, we'll have a quick measure up of the internal diameter. Uh, looking for the centermost point of the circle. And we've got a reading there of just shy of 58 millimeters. I don't know if you can see that. So we'll use that to draw our circle. So again, using the calipers, uh, I've set the radius of the circle to about 30 millimeters, because I want it to be a little bit bigger than the hole, and we can always sand it down to get a nice tight fit. So I've locked those off, and I've got an old style school compass, because I've got nothing better at the moment, but this should do the job. So we'll line this up as best we can. and we'll transfer our circle to the pallet wood. Now this never went well in maths at school, so hopefully it goes better now. Beautiful. My maths teacher would be proud. So just having a quick measure up. We've got just over 60 millimeters. So that'll give us a nice sort of margin of error. And we can use a sander to fine tune that to fit the hole. So let's go over to the bandsaw and get this cut out. So here we are at my poor neglected bandsaw. Um, just stuck in this corner of the workshop. But it's getting used finally today, so let's get our eyes on for safety and let's fire up and cut out this circle.
As you can see, my bandsaw is not the most efficient tool in the world. So we had to take that in lots of small increments, but we got there. Um, it's not too bad. Take a bit of sand just to get it circular and flush. Not bad. Okay, so I don't currently own a disc sander. Uh, that is one of the things that's on the shopping list for the new workshop. Uh, the same as a spindle sander, either one would have probably helped a lot here. So what I'm going to do is just use my random orbit sander, just rotate the piece, applying even pressure, and just check it every now and again, and I think we'll get there. Let's just have a quick check. Very close now. I've got a nice aggressive 80 grit paper on here, so it shouldn't take us long to get down. And we'll actually put a slight taper on this side just to help us insert it into the dust extraction port. So I think we're just about there. Um, that took longer than it should have done, but without the right tools, it's very hard. So it should be a nice tight fit with some non-gentle persuasion with a mallet. I think we'll be good to go there. So now we'll focus on the inner hole for the dust extraction connection on the shop vac. So here is the shop vac connection, looking rather battle worn. Let's have a quick measure up if we zero these off. We've got just over 30 millimeters, 30.5. So we'll probably do a 30 millimeter hole to again, give it a nice airtight connection. If we do overcook it a little bit, we can just wrap some tape around there just to uh, give us a nice tight seal there. Giggity. Okay, so the nearest hole saw size or spade bit size, which I've decided to use, I've got is 32 mil in either. So that will overcook the hole just a small amount, but what we can do is just wrap tape around the end of the shop vac connection, which can stay on there permanently. That may actually help um, when put uh, inserting it in other tools as well. So I probably should have drilled this hole first, but there you go. So I'm just going to try and use this Black & Decker Workmate as a makeshift uh, vice, if you like, just to try and stop this from flying across the room. So I've marked a hole already in the middle, or nearest to the middle as I can sight by eye, and we'll see how this chops clamped in there. And the battery has just run out on my drill. Lovely. So we're almost there, so I'm just going to try and squeeze every last milli milliamp out of that battery that I can. And we'll go in from the other side, that should uh, stop us getting too much tear out. We already have a mark there from the point of the spade bit, which is always handy. See if we have enough juice to get through. Just. There we have it. A bit messy, but fine we can send that out like a giant polo so to get the shop back connection let's just have a quick that's actually not too bad that's quite a tight fit I reckon 
one to two wraps of masking tape or duct tape around there and that will be a lovely tight seal. Not too shabby. Okay, so we've now got our newly created dust port adapter. So I've given it a quick sand inside just to get rid of any uh, unwanted uh, splinters or anything. Just, I'm sure it would have been fine anyway, but that's nice to do. So now we've got to try and force it into the dust port on the table saw. So we're going to need a hammer. So let's see how much persuasion this needs. We need a nice tight connection because that give us a good air seal for the vacuum and get lots more dust out of there. Ah, okay, so I've gone back and given it another sand just to try and take a bit more off and I think that's looking better. I think that's good and solid. And of course, if you ever want to get it out, you can just get some kind of hook in there, give it a pull, and away it should come. But that's given us a nice, tight air seal. So if we just give it a quick test with the shop vac connection, perfect. With a bit of tape around there, we'll have a lovely seal. Super. So anyway, hope you found that helpful. Um, really simple make. I'll probably do it for the other machines as well, uh, seeing how well this has gone. So it's gonna allow me to quickly, because I've just got the one shot vac, I'm gonna be able to move this around much quicker than I have been doing, which is becoming key really, is the efficiency. And just slot it straight in there and away you go. I'd love for you to join me again next week for another video and uh, please if you wouldn't mind please click subscribe and like and do follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We now also have a Pinterest page so I'll be posting builds on there and of course we have the Etsy store. So uh, yeah thanks very much and see you next time. So in the previous workshop video, I discussed using the duct tape trip, uh, duct tape trip, put my teeth in. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck? And I really need to chuck some of this away. Come on. <laughs>